Hi, in this video we're going to talk about writing instance methods. So let's revisit a few things. First, remember that an object is something that has both state and behavior. And what instance variables do that we've already introduced, instance variables help us save the state in objects. What about behavior? How do we define the behavior of an object? So now it's time to introduce instance methods. Instance methods are methods that define the behavior of an object. So we might have the question with this rectangle, what's the area of this rectangle? How do we do that? So to do that, we'll write an instance method and we'll write an instance method called getArea. So you can see that instance method here in the blue. Above, I have the instance variables that we're referencing. And to compute the area, what we'll do is we'll write a method called getArea and return the width times the height, which is the area of a rectangle. So the general form of an instance method looks like this. You write visibility, return type, name, and then parameters. So visibility is usually public or private. Return type is the type of the return value, or void if there's no return. Name is the name of the method. And parameters is a list of the parameters to that um, method. So you can see here for our getArea method, it was a public method, it returned an int, it was called getArea and didn't have any parameters. And when we want to use an instance method, uh, we can do so like this. So here I've shown what you do to create a new rectangle, and then to call the instance method, we'll say something like int area equals rectangle one dot get area. So note here that we are calling this method on an object, on an instance of the class. And that's why it's called an instance method. You need an object, you need an instance to call this method. So in general, we can think of calling an instance method as sending a message to an object. It's sort of another way to refer to the same thing. So this general form here looks like this, receiver.methodName parameters. Receiver is the name of the object we are calling a method on. Method name is the name of the instance method, and parameters are the inputs to the method. So this is the general form here for calling a method. Note that this differs from methods that we used earlier because since these are instance methods, they need an object, they need an instance of the class. Before, we, we weren't using those. So you can see here that rectangle one, that's the object, that's the receiver, and get area, that's the method name. So now let's go into our editor and write some of these methods. Okay, so in this program we have our rectangle class from earlier and our rectangle tester. So I'll start by running it. Great, so we get some information about our rectangle. Now what I'll do is we'll go and we'll define our um, instance method to get the area. So we'll say get area. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll write return width times height. So to see exactly what's going on here, we're making a new method, a new public method you can use in this class, and it's returning an int, and it's called getArea. And it's defined as that the area of this rectangle object is its width times its height. So now if we go into rectangle tester, we could print out something like this. We can say the area of R1 is r1.getArea. We'll run that. And so you can see there it is. Uh, a 10 by 2 rectangle has an area of um, 20. And now we'll try this again for rectangle 2. So I'll change the, the object that we're calling the method on. And when we run this, note that we get a different area. This method is being called with two different objects. That's why we see different results. So in this program, we have our point class from earlier, which represents an, a point with an xy coordinate. And we have our point tester. So we'll start off by creating a point. We'll say point p1 equals new point. Say it's at 1, 5. And we'll print out that point. And we'll make a new point p2. We'll say that point is at 7, 3 and we'll print out that point. So let's run this program. Great, 
Great. Now we'll go into point. What we want to do is we want to write an instance method um, called move. And it's going to move uh, this point by an amount dx and dy. And so it's an instance method. It's because you, you need to talk about which point you're moving. So we'll write uh, that method by saying public void move int dx int dy. And so what this is going to do is it's going to move the current point, the current point by an amount dx dy. So to move dx um, in the x direction, we'll say x plus equals dx. And then to move dy in the y direction, we'll say y plus equals dy. And so this is it. This is an instance method that moves that point. So we'll go back into point tester and we'll try moving p1. So we'll say um, move p1 by, we'll move it by three, uh, four, three, four. And now we'll say p1.move, three, four. And then we'll print out what p1 looks like after that. So you can see after moving p1 by three, four, uh, p1 now is at x is four, y is nine. And similarly, we can try calling move on p2. So we'll say p2.move, and we'll move it by uh, one, two. So well then after that, we'll print line um, move p2 by one, two, and then we'll print out p2. And so you can see after moving that point, it has a new um, location. And the important thing here is that these are instance method. They're being called on specific point objects. And so when we modified here, when we modified the instance variables, remember that each object has its own instance. So this is an example of writing an instance method.